Glass jars are great to recycle, but sometimes they're pretty handy to keep. First, you wanna get rid of any of that excess food left in there. Now these are gonna take a soak to get rid of those labels and sticky stuff. You'll need a little bit of dish soap and a few glugs of white vinegar. Now you want super hot water straight from the tap or boil a pot of water. Let everything soak until those labels come off easy and clean, about 20 minutes. And that label should peel right off. Any remaining residue should be easily scrubbed away. If you are reusing glass jars for food, just make sure to thoroughly clean it or even sanitize it in a dishwasher cycle. Get crafty and turn a jar into a candle. Upcycled jars make great gifts. Tie a bow on it and they'll love it. If you're a plant person, propagate and share a cutting with a friend. Even use those jars to refill bulk goods at your favorite sustainable store. Foaming hand soap is great and these bottles can last quite a while. But what they don't tell you is you're paying the same price, even more, for diluted soap. But there's a simple way you can cheat the system. Foam soap is just water and soap aerated with a pump to last longer. So you can refill a bottle yourself once it's empty or treat yourself to a fancy reusable bottle. Besides, you'll be saving so much money anyways. You'll need three or four tablespoons of your favorite soap. I prefer to use a more natural soap like a steel, but you can also use any regular hand soap refill. Now fill the rest of the bottle up with clean water. One pump will do, 20 seconds. I love fresh herbs, but it's hard to use them all in just one recipe. And even after a day or two in the fridge, they can look pretty sad. Here's how to get fresh herbs to last longer. The trick is to treat those herbs like fresh cut flowers. First, I like to pick off any leaves near the bottom of the stem and use those up first. Trim off about half an inch from the bottom of the stem. Now these go in a jar of fresh water. You only need a little bit of water, just enough to cover those stems about an inch. I like to repurpose these produce bags just cover to retain moisture. Now these herbs are ready to be stored in your fridge. Replace that water every few days and these herbs will stay looking fresher longer. This method works perfect for leafy herbs like mint, cilantro, and parsley, even green onion. For basil, just keep this on your counter. It doesn't like cold temperatures. From those old socks to mismatched socks, they don't have to be trashed quite yet. These are the perfect tools for dusting around the house, blinds, or even our little green friends. The options really are endless, from cleaning and detailing your car to applying stain to wood grain. Use those old textiles as packing materials for storage or moving. And those old pillowcases are great for cleaning as well. You can use them for your ceiling fans. I like to keep a bin with all those old towels and some socks. These are just dedicated to cleaning up and using as rags around the house. And instead of throwing your old items in the trash, do textile donations instead. Just like any other recycling bin, I like to keep one just for textiles. Many different types of textiles and fabrics can be donated, especially if they're cotton. When it comes to certain types of used linens like socks and undergarments, those can't be donated to secondhand stores. So instead, recycle them the right way. All this candle wax may be gone, but this candle jar isn't trash quite yet. These containers are so great and decorative, but we've got to get them clean first. If your candle uses a soft wax, use a spoon to scrape out as much excess as you can. If the wax is clean and you're feeling ambitious, collect it and create a new candle. Before we get the remainder of that wax out, I like to clean up any soot first. A damp towel should do the trick. Hot water is the key to melting all that excess wax. You don't need to fill it up all the way, just enough to cover and melt the wax. You can just let this sit overnight and that wax will solidify or to speed things up, once that water's cooled off, throw it in the fridge. Now that that wax is solidified at the top, you can skim it off or I like to strain it. With all that wax removed, you can clean the rest of the jar with soap and water. And be sure that none of that wax ends up in your drain. Now you can repurpose those jars as a storage canister or a planter. So you're looking to ditch those plastic straws, huh? But reusable straws aren't great for crowds. And don't even get me started on paper straws. Tastes like toilet paper. The straw's not your typical straw. It's agave. It's durable, sustainable, and biodegradable. And agave fiber won't disintegrate after that first sip. Now this is a little watered down. One thing you can use is frozen fruit. That'll keep your drink cold and add flavor. That way you can even use less ice and keep things delicious until the last drop. And you have a little snack or popsicles instead of ice. That burst of flavor will work great in drinks that are less sweet. I like to buy bigger bottles for my drink station. That way guests can mix and match and create their own combinations. For a signature drink, mix up a large batch. And have fun, you can even theme it to your party. Sometimes you're in need of dry clothes quickly. Make sure your dryer isn't overcrowded. The trick to speeding up your drying cycle, add in a dry clean towel. The towel's gonna absorb excess moisture, speeding up that cycle. Hang and air dry bulky items, delicate items that you don't need right away. Be aware of the capacity for the washer and the dryer. If either are too full, they're not gonna do their job efficiently. It's okay to split it up into multiple loads. 
And please, keep that lint trap clean. A few bottles at home may not seem like a lot, but seeing this much really makes you reconsider your recycling habits. We could save a ton of these plastic bottles if we just use reusable bottles. If you're recycling plastic bottles, some actually ask you to keep the cap on. With modern recycling technology, it's actually easier with the cap on. This is a full wall of aluminum cans, and I recognize some of these cans too. Recycling facilities like this really illustrate the point of how much waste we create. You can make smarter purchases by avoiding plastic and choosing glass, aluminum, or cardboard packaging. In addition to recycling cardboard, you can also use it for compost. Both aluminum and glass are infinitely recyclable, making them a way better choice than choosing plastic. Ugh. Imagine if you had to throw all this away in your own backyard. You'd probably rethink what you're using. Doing better for the environment is as simple as just making good choices. Coffee grounds are great for your garden, but I'm gonna show you how you can use them to clean around the house. Ugh. If you've got a fridge that smells funky, just use some coffee grounds, they'll work as a deodorizer. This is a fun little swap instead of that traditional method of using baking soda. If you have pots and pans that could use a little extra TLC, reach for those used grounds. You just need a spoonful and a little dish soap. Those coffee grounds are mild abrasive, so they'll help scrub away that caked on debris, but they won't scratch your pots and pans. Just be sure to use only a spoonful. Too many grounds can clog your drain. Looks just like new. You can also give yourself the deep clean with a coffee ground body scrub. Just mix some used coffee grounds with a little bit of coconut oil. Give that a stir. You can also add your favorite essential oils. You can use this as a body scrub in the shower or a hand scrub over the sink. This will help exfoliate and moisturize and you can make somebody a gift out of what you were gonna throw away. Save the rest of that for later. So save those coffee grounds and put them to good use. Over the years, I've made some swaps that aren't only better, but make travel more enjoyable. Of course, a refillable bottle is a staple. It doesn't sweat, it doesn't leak, and it'll keep those liquids colder longer. Water's one thing, but I am a coffee aficionado, and carrying my own thermos is the bee's knees. That delicious beverage will stay at the perfect drinking temperature longer, and a sealed lid will help prevent spills and messes. Resealable bags are a big win and so great for snacks. I especially love a hard, small container or bento box. These will prevent your snacks from getting crushed while you're on the move. You can even level up and bring a reusable utensil. Reusable straws, I even love this one for boba. And no need to buy extra straws if you already have tumblers that include them. For on the go, I like to create a simple refillable sanitizing kit. A spray bottle with some isopropyl alcohol, a few drops of essential oil, lavender and tea tree work great. A little shake and I pack in a few small microfiber cloth. With this, I can give surfaces a quick wipe down and clean. With all this being reusable, I pack some soap so it's washable on the go. A small pump bottle will work great. Castile soap is everything. I love that this stuff is all natural and has so many uses. Any old sink will do, and on the go, you can get things clean. Don't pour this down the drain, it's good stuff. Put pickle juice to good use. Leftover pickle brine makes a great tenderizer. That pickle juice is packed with flavor and that acidity for tenderizing. Or use it for a ranch style dressing. And I love the pickle brines with garlic and herbs and spices. I'm gonna fish all that out of there. Dice this up, some of the juice, sour cream, a glob of mayo. For a lighter alternative, replace both with Greek yogurt. Onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder, fresh or dried herbs like dill or parsley. This is a bonus, but buttermilk adds great flavor. Give everything a good mix. Give it a taste and add additional salt if needed, but that brine's pretty salty. Use that leftover juice to make more pickles. I'm using some carrot ribbons and cucumber, but you can use any hearty vegetable like peppers, onions, or even cauliflower. Pour on that brine. Give this a day or two in the fridge and you'll have a batch of quick pickles. And all pickle brines can work from jalapenos to pepperoncinis. While I'm glad many restaurants have moved to reusable containers, I've started quite the collection. These are great for lunches and meal prepping, but I like to use them to reorganize around the house. Everyone's guilty of a random junk drawer. Grab a few containers and take the time to clean up. Great way to grab and go exactly what you need. When you purchase things where assemblies are required, you're usually left with parts and pieces. So I just reach for a container to get all that organized. Just choose the right size container and be sure to print a label so you know what those parts are for. These are also great to organize games, puzzles, and craft supplies. These are the perfect containers because they make great activity kits for kids when you're on the go. When you're walking around the beach and all you see is trash, that just tarnishes that environment. So we need to treat it well and leave it better than we found it. 
Think of the sunscreen you're wearing. Some of them are actually harmful to things in the ocean, like coral reefs. Make sure you're choosing one that says it's reef safe. That way it's better for you and the ocean. When you use reef safe sunscreen, there are no chemicals in that sunscreen that can harm coral reefs, especially the coral that live there. It's easy to tell what's reef safe because the container actually says reef, reef safe, safe on it. Everybody's gonna uh, you know, advertise it that reef it's reef, it safe. reef safe. Exactly, All exactly. Right. It's really important to keep plastic, especially plastic bags out of the ocean. They mimic jellyfish, which are a food source for turtles. They'll eat the plastic bags instead and choke on them, and that's not good. All of our waste has to end up somewhere, and one of the last places we want it is right here at the ocean. I have something you can do with your extra fruit and vegetables before they spoil. We're gonna dehydrate without a dehydrator. To start, we're gonna preheat the oven to as low as it'll go. For my oven, that's 170. These apples I've had for a little while, but now I'm gonna turn them into chips. Having uniform slices is gonna be key, and a mandolin is the perfect tool for that. You're looking for a slice that's 1 8 to 1 16th inch thin. Or you can test your knife skills with an extra sharp knife and help prevent browning, especially for fruits. Give it a little soak in some lemon water. Since we're dehydrating, just make sure to give these a good shake and pat dry. I'm just gonna get these arranged on a baking sheet lined with a silicone mat, or you can use parchment paper, that works too. You can also use a baking rack. This will help the air circulate around the food in the oven. You'll also wanna move the racks towards the center of the oven and space them out a little bit. This process can take up to eight hours, but check on things about once an hour. You can also use your oven as a dehydrator to dry herbs. Using your oven as a dehydrator is a great way to make some healthy snacks of your own. Ooh, so satisfying. When there's a little left in the jar, don't just jump to tossing it out. Let's turn this into a delicious peanut sauce. A little soy sauce, rice wine vinegar. Give a good squeeze to a lime. Bonus points if you use the zest. I'm gonna give it a good shake to loosen up that peanut butter. The goal, use up all that peanut butter. Scrape all the sides. Grate in some garlic and ginger if you have it on hand. And a touch of sesame oil. Just like that, we've got a sauce you can pour over noodles. Mix that all up. Rice noodles, ramen noodles, anything goes here. Something tasty and no peanut butter wasted. The options don't end there, you can even do overnight oats. Use your milk of choice, some oats, chia seeds, and maple syrup even. And a little bit of jelly or preserves is great for vinaigrettes and sauces. Little vinegar, gonna get that jelly loosened up. Olive oil, of course. Season with salt and pepper. You can add in fresh herbs, garlic, just make it your own. Your coffee or tea routine is creating more waste than you realize. Here are some more sustainable alternatives for that morning pick-me-up. First off, when you're buying coffee, buy locally. It's gonna have a smaller footprint. My favorite shop offers reusable containers, which is great because I get discounts on refills. And if you don't do whole beans, many shops will grind fresh for you. Instead of disposable filters, switch to reusable. And for those single serve pods, make the swap to reusable. For tea lovers, it's easy. Go loose leaf. I love a good tea. And of course, use a refillable infuser option. This really doesn't matter, but I wanted to show you my scuba guy. He's a little tea scuba guy. Throwing a party and entertaining can come with a whole lot of waste. Having everything disposable may be convenient, but this is already just all trash. Even the best ragers are not worth the waste. Instead of plate waste, just throw reusables in the dishwasher. Choose cloth napkins or bandanas, and those can go right into the laundry. And the best swap you can make is your cups. Problem with these types of cups is guests tend to use several throughout a get together, which creates more trash. Of course, you can use washable cups. And I like to use koozies so guests can personalize their cups and know whose is whose. Nice little party favor too. Alternatively, if you want something disposable, go for aluminum. Everyone can go Banksy on their cup, and aluminum is infinitely recyclable. However, I would stay away from glass. You don't want any accidents. And for individual beverages, choose aluminum as well. Bonus party points for styling your fridge. To save some money, you can create a water refill station. But go ahead and use something reusable. That way you can use it party after party after party after party. Don't let your ice go to waste. An insulated cooler will help it last longer. Better yet, use a water cooler for your ice. This will also help your ice last longer. Plus, bonus Jonas, when the ice melts, it's like second drink. Sad when the beach looks like a landfill. I'm gonna show you what you should bring and what you shouldn't bring to your next beach day. One thing you absolutely never wanna to bring to the beach is glass. This breaks, there's no way you're cleaning all that glass out of the sand. And avoid packaged drinks. These things always end up on beaches. Make sure everybody has their own reusable water bottle. And if you want a straw, make sure you're bringing your own reusable straw. Bring a large pitcher of your favorite beverage and an insulated cup so it stays cold and there's nothing to throw away. Packaged food may seem convenient, but this is just extra trash that can end up on the beach. Prep your food in advance, like apples. 
Instead of bringing a whole apple, cut it up. That way there's no food waste left on the beach. Even the tops of strawberries or banana peels, it's best to leave those at home. Bring a mesh bag to the beach. A mesh bag is great in the beach because the holes will let sand flow right through. If you're packing a picnic to the beach, bring reusable plates, cutlery, and cloth napkins. For those windy days, use a cliff. A small mesh bag is great for your dirty napkins. They can go right in there and into the wash when you get home. Take your own trash bag to the beach. That way you can take out all your own trash and hopefully pick up some trash that's left behind as well. Having your own bag ensures you have a place for your trash if the public bins are too full. Imagine if everybody was responsible for picking up their own trash, how beautiful and amazing these beaches would be. While you can reuse plastic containers, I'd avoid reusing them for food. Glass is a lot easier to clean and make sure it's sterile over time. If you're trying to remove sticky stuff from a plastic container, avoid the hot water method. It can warp or damage it. Instead, you'll need a little rubbing alcohol and elbow grease. I like to apply the alcohol with a paper towel and just let it sit there for a few minutes to soak in. The alcohol should help break down that sticky stuff and you'll just have to scrape and scrub it away. Pickling is the perfect way to preserve produce. Plus, you can use your favorite flavors to make it your own. For canning these pickles, I need to start with sterilized jars. Just a little boiling water is all it takes. Just the jars, not the lids. These just give a good hand wash. For pickles, we need brine, and that starts with hot water. And vinegar for that tang. And I recommend canning and pickling salt. I like to enhance the flavor with garlic and turmeric, but you can add any flavors you like. Now for the star of our show, cucumbers. Not quite pickles yet. I'm gonna turn these into spears so they'll fit in my jars. And it's best to use fresh cucumbers to start off with. You'll get a crispier pickle in the end. At the base of the jar, you can add any whole spices you like. I love spice, so I'm gonna add a little red chili flake. Well, a lot of red chili flake. You want these jam packed tight, and I like to add fresh herbs. Now I'm gonna ladle in the brine. Fill each jar, leaving half an inch from the top. The vinegar and salt in here are key ingredients in food preservation. Now to get these jars sealed and sterilized, I'm gonna lower these into some simmering water, making sure they're nice and submerged. I'm gonna cover the pot and bring this to a boil. Time is gonna depend on your recipe and your elevation. Leave these undisturbed for 24 hours. No more pop, now that's a nice seal. A compost bin is for every kitchen, no matter where you are, instead of all that food waste going into the trash, you can reduce the amount of waste you have by putting it in the compost. If you're juicing some citrus, peeling an apple, anything, put all that scraps right into your compost. This banana, I'm not gonna eat the peel, of course, so that goes in there. When it's time to do that fridge clean out, anything that's gone bad and moldy, like these snap peas, I'm just gonna put them right in the bin. After breakfast or baking, these eggshells go right in there. But what shouldn't go in the compost is the inside of that egg. There's too much fat and protein to break down in the compost. As a general rule, you should avoid fats, cheeses, meats. These won't break down and they'll lead to a bad odor. Oils and liquids, you should avoid as well. I use a lot of paper towels too in my kitchen, but instead of feeling bad about throwing these away, they'll go right into the compost. Even if you're trying to reduce the amount of waste in your life, you still get junk mail. That can go in your compost too. Shredding helps give everything a head start to be broken down, and you can even add cardboard boxes. Also make sure to not include any plastic tape. This paper tape will break down in your compost. All that paper waste is broken down and ready for the compost. Even if you don't have a garden or planters, you can still compost and donate it. You may be tempted to hold on to devices, but trust me, you don't need that old tech. Many electronics have valuable components that can be recycled and reused. When it comes to your data, make sure it's backed up and securely wiped before you dispose of it. And that includes the hard drive on your computer. Cords and cables can also be recycled, so don't throw these away. If they're removable, take out any batteries and, oh, memory cards too. Rechargeable batteries need to be recycled separately. Many cases that are made of plastic can just go right into the recycling. Just check with the manufacturer website. Other cases, if they're in good shape, can be donated or returned to the manufacturer. Pack a crate and check your local area for e-waste disposal events. You can also bring them to be recycled at office supply or electronic stores. Now that's a lot of sauce. I'm gonna show you how to preserve with a pressure cooker. I have some water boiling here just to warm up my jars. Just gonna set these aside while I prepare everything else. This is my favorite bolognese recipe, so I always make extra to can for later. Don't fill them completely, leave a little space at the top. Using a funnel helps keep the outside of the jar clean. That way you'll get a proper seal while canning. When you're canning anything, the jars are actually reusable, but the lids are not. Make sure you use brand new, clean lids every time. And just screw on those grains, just finger tight. That's all you need. 
That sound means that these cans aren't sealed, so we're gonna take care of that next. You'll need to use a pressure cooker when canning meats and lower acidity foods. Things like carrots, beets, and green beans need to be canned with a pressure cooker. High pressure allows water to reach higher temperatures. That will kill bacteria and make these shelf stable. With the rack on the bottom and a few inches of simmering water, we're ready to seal this up. Now it's time for the magic to happen. Let that pressure rise by following the instructions for your pressure cooker. Leave these undisturbed at room temperature for 24 hours, then they're ready. If you're RVing or camping, access to power is definitely a luxury. Traditional generators require gas, they're noisy, and they put off fumes. Solar options are gonna give you all the power you need and they're completely silent. So if you're renting an RV, choose one with solar as an efficient source of power. If you're camping, portable panels will let you charge small electronics and light up camp at night. And even when the sun is down, a battery bank will give you power all through the night. For maximum efficiency, keep those panels clean and in direct sunlight. That means no parking in the shade. If you're out there soaking up nature, that's no reason to live in the dark ages. There's about a half a cup of mayo in here. I've got a recipe. That infamous burger sauce is just common ingredients. A couple squirts of ketchup. I love it when you don't need a recipe. Most versions of this recipe don't use mustard, but I like it. Just a little bit. I'm gonna combine a little vinegar and a little pickle juice. And a teaspoon of sugar. Relish or chopped up pickles. Add some pepper and taste it before adding salt. And when I'm feeling wild, I plus up the sauce with onion powder and paprika. Simple shake to combine. Oh, that looks perfect. And this is all completely customizable. Adjust it and have it your way. Instead of solely relying on snow melt and rainfall for drinking water, we can now recycle water to supplement mother nature. Instead of hand washing a full sink of dishes, use your dishwasher more often. It's actually a little bit more efficient because your dishwasher recycles the water that's in there instead of just sending water down the drain. And to save even more water, most dishwashers, you don't even need to pre-rinse your plates. It's best to save up your laundry and wash full loads. Larger loads are gonna be more efficient than a bunch of small loads. It's important how much water you're conserving, but it also matters what you're putting down the drain. Like the toilet, there's only three things that go down there. Numero uno, a deuce, and TP. Save water when washing hands, in the shower, in between lathering. And when you're brushing your teeth. Sweep driveways and patios instead of rinsing them off with water. Or use a blower if you have one. Single-use plastic should be a lunch thing of the past. I've completely moved to bags like this. They're great. A light toast on that bread will help it keep its texture. Pack condiments on the side and add them right before you're ready to eat. Use your lettuce or greens as a barrier. Cheese also makes a great barrier to prevent soggy bread. Those really wet ingredients like pickles or tomatoes, keep those in the center. And when you can, choose a hard container to prevent smushing. And replace that cling wrap film with wax paper. This stuff is washable, sustainable, and it makes packing lunches fun with all the different colors and patterns you can find. Don't forget to treat your apples with salt water solution so they don't turn brown. What really helps, prep and portion ahead of time so you can just grab and go. This is perfect for families so kids can just grab the items they want and build their own lunch. Also keep those pantry snacks organized to make the week effortless. You can't control gas prices, but you can be smarter when it's time to head to the pump. Here are some tips for your next fuel up. Remember, the little arrow on the gas gauge lets you know which side the tank's on. That helps a lot when you're driving a different vehicle like a rental car. Try to stick to a single gas brand, one that may offer a loyalty program or discounts. That way over time, you'll be saving more money. Fuel up midweek when prices tend to be lower. On Friday, they go up, especially over holiday weekends. It can be better to pump gas in cooler temperatures when gas is denser. You'll get more bang for your buck, but the difference is kind of negligible. And make sure that gas cap is sealed and tight to prevent additional vapors from escaping. There's a little bit of chocolate left in here, and I know we can use it. Here's how to make an easy mug cake. That last little bit of chocolate syrup or fudge, that works too. Let's start with those dry ingredients. Two tablespoons of sugar. If you like your desserts extra sweet, add a third tablespoon. Four tablespoons of flour. Two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Baking soda, a quarter teaspoon. And just a pinch of salt. Get everything combined. Our wet ingredients are gonna go right in here. A tablespoon of oil, three tablespoons of milk. I like to cap it, shake, to loosen up all that chocolate. Get in there with your spoon or spatula. Make sure you get all of it, a splash of vanilla. Chocolate chips or nuts make a good add-in. Pour all the wet into the dry. Gently mix everything together. Start off by microwaving for a minute. Check it, make sure things aren't overflowing in another 30 seconds. It's ready when the top is set and no longer gooey. Let it cool off for a few minutes before digging in. Rich, decadent, microwaved cake. Of course you can reuse a box for moving and storage, but I love this trick to resize a box. By making a few cuts, we can resize this box. Right down the middle and on the other side too. 
With those few cuts, you can reorient and reshape the box. Now it fits and ships. With a little adhesive shelf paper, you can turn any box into a decorative storage bin. This is great to make your own custom storage boxes or decorate a box for a gift. You can even use a hot glue gun or spray adhesive and fabric to cover your box. You can even use cardboard to create custom drawer dividers. Take some measurements of that drawer so you can cut your cardboard pieces. Once you have those pieces, you'll just create a notch for a nifty interlocking system. And the best part, customize and size those compartments to fit all your needs. This one's fun and super simple. Add your chips to a bag. You know me, I love a reusable bag. And you wanna leave some extra room in there too. Seal it up and leave a little gap at one end. Insert a straw. Now I promised you fun. Blow air into the bag as you quickly seal it. This may seem a little ridiculous, but it's gonna be effective. That air will act as a cushion so those chips don't get crushed. It's the same reason those store bags have extra air in them. And of course, pack those lightweight crunchable items on top. The other go-to, just use a hard-shelled container. The only crunching happening here is between my teeth. Nobody's got a crush on you, except for maybe Mandy Moore. 